um, priorities and goals for EPFOR funders, and generally for us as scientists to be able to translate some of the very complicated concepts that you've heard today to be understandable to the general public. And one of the ways um, of doing it is through art. One of the current EPSRC priorities is people at the heart of ICT. Well, these people have to understand what is, it, what is the technology that you're offering them. So we've been very fortunate to have Dara Regal with us, and she's going to tell, tell you about how she's gone about translating some of the very complicated photonics and optical communication concepts through uh, the means of art. Dara. Thank you. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today and listen to the presentation. I didn't understand very much of all of them. Uh, like I might need discrete time channel modeling to be re-explained to me. <laughs> but this is something I'm used to by now. When Professor Babel first gave me the honor of working with Ruth, she asked me to attend a presentation. I asked her what I understand, and she said, of course. But the talk was completely indecipherable to me, both in language and subject matter. Indeed, the whole premise of information carried on life let alone maximizing its capacity, not only seems unfathomable to me, but to the general public. The layperson views your work as the ultimate black box of the unknown and incomprehensible. So my greatest asset in undertaking the job of artist in residence is my ignorance. If I can make some sense of the work, perhaps I can convey it to a broader audience and make a more of a public impact. So I'd first like to show you a series of disparate exercises which I undertook to grapple with the seemingly impossible concept of unlocking the capacity of life and how these exercises have evolved into a more unified process of making a discovery. So this is the first paper that I heard of and understand it. And this is what I did with it. So I found it completely incomprehensible, opaque and even funny. My reaction was to make the presentation paper into a form that I could understand. So I got a hard copy of the, of the report and I shredded it. <laughs> <laughs> and made handmade paper. In this process, the information from my subsequent discussions with the group filtered through and the piece came to represent the mind-boggling concept that millions of phone calls can be, as you all know, can be transmitted simultaneously across a single optical fiber, which has a minute diameter, and then be deciphered at the other end. This, in my mind, was like recreating the original document from the shredded, reconstituted handmade paper. In initial visit to the lab, I saw a mess of wires. The only thing that sort of attracted me, which was familiar to everybody, was the constellation diagram. In response, I made monoprints of the diagram, shown here. In this process, as the ink, synonymous with information, was repetitively transfer transferred from the same original image, it blurred, like in the digital diagram, and became a physical <coughs> display in itself. After sitting with one of the members and had concepts explained to me, my head was sore and I went to get a cup of coffee. But this cup of coffee ended up to describe that propagation with noise, which is the title of this one, as I played with ink and coffee on some paper. I also made photogravure prints, which it was the beginning of, for me of using light as the actual medium for exploration. In this process, an image is etched onto a photosensitive plate and then printed. This piece represents distortion. As the source of the image would appear unclear, it also represents my fascination in the process of some scientific research where only the shadows, reflection, and paths of the object study can be observed, not actually the thing itself. I tried to understand how information is actually encoded online. I set up explorations to understand concepts, again, obvious to everybody here, of polarization, wavelength, on off. I made objects for me to visualize these properties and then expose them at intervals onto paper covered with a photosensitive medium called the cyanotype, like an old-fashioned blueprint. My first few attempts were a disaster. As Thomas Jefferson said, 
I have not failed 10,000 times. I have not failed once. I have succeeded in proving that those 10,000 ways will not work. When I have eliminated, <coughs> eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. There are many parallels in artistic and scientific processes where something is tried, often does not work, but it gets us to the next step of discovery. Indeed, some of them, more of them. Indeed, some of these making projects have shown uh, how the, a process of gathering, filtering, and information, which, well, they've shown the, a process of gathering and filtering information, which transcends the initial intent and creates a new understanding. The passage of discovery, communicating with light, has been translated for me to drawing with light. And here's the, the objects I use to, to expose the light. Carrying on with the theme of glass, we started to look at the making of optical fibers. I was drawn to these offcuts from preforms. I wanted to display and capture their beauty. This resulted in a series of photograms which used direct exposure of an object onto a photographic paper, as shown in my very first image, and there's one out in the hallway. We named them Measuring Light, which is indeed what the group does measure what to the uninitiated would seem immeasurable, that is, the capacity of light. Our current project is how to display these fragile pieces. I see them as a continuum in the elect electronic and electrical engineering as displayed on the eighth floor of the Roberts Building at UCL, where ONG is located. Furthermore, this technology is part of the evolution of optics and sits alongside the striking displays downstairs in this building, such as the spectroscope and other optical apparatus. A way to display the glass pieces was informed by the observation of the manufacture of optical fibers. So this is the glass preform. People are familiar with that. And the drawing of them. Our piece has a brass base containing a light. The offcut is then gently held in a glass tube within a tube, similar to the cylindrical preforms. In this way, the refractive properties of optical fibers made of pore with cladding is illuminated and revealed. This piece is called total internal reflection and now represents the evolution of communications from a wire base, metal wire base system to optical fibers. In summary, the work with the law has been a wonderful journey for me. I've experimented with different media using light, such as cyanotype, photograph, or printing, and photographs. Through the process, I've begin, begun to gain insight into unlock. Not necessarily making a literal, direct representation of the group's investigations, but translating the concept of unlocking the capacity of light into a poetic and tangible form. So let me finish with this quote from Richard Edward, who worked from an early stage on the research of optical fibers with Charles Kale at STL in Harlow. He wrote, when science grinds to a halt in the details of a problem, it makes progress by standing back and exploring metaphors and analogies for those things that are not understood. Though this black box approach may seem a gross simplification, it can be a powerful tool when dealing with systems with hidden or unknown complexity, and in this instance, he's talking about the human brain. I would say we could also call this black box way of representing art.